with Debbie Simon, and Debbie has brought, well, a, a whole range of molding and texture, and we're doing so many things, I'm really excited. So we should get started right yeah. away. Yeah. So basically, we are gonna work with epoxy clays. Now, epoxy clays are um, just like you would think of your epoxy adhesives, resins, but it's in a clay form. And um, you're always going to have a hardener and you're always going to have a color that you need to mix. So to get started with, um, we are, there's a selection, um, a lot of the epoxy clays will come with a selection of colors, definitely black and white. And you can actually pre-mix a lot of your colors so that you have a little more variety too. So to get started, I've already mixed the white and the pink for the color that we're gonna use. And now what I need to do is add the second part, um, which is the hardener. Now keep in mind, you wanna have two equal parts. Um, really, as long as it's eyeballed and it's close enough, I usually roll it into balls, that should be good enough. And of course you're wearing gloves to mix everything. Absolutely, we wanna keep, um, you know, it's still a non-toxic, it's, it's not a bad, um, adhesive, but at the same time, if you have sensitive skin, you don't know. So the biggest thing with mixing is you don't wanna do a lot of this where you're putting a lot of friction into it and heat, because it is curing with its heat. Um, but you do wanna sort of pinch it out. It. And yep. I noticed that the gray isn't really altering the color of the clay Not that, that much. much. Mm -hmm. Just so you hand. don't have to worry about it. No. So the biggest thing is you wanna mix this until there's no more marbling. And for I so think no more marbling, meaning it's one consistent, consistent color. color. Absolutely. So, and at this point, I can take off my gloves and not use them. You know, again, if you have sensitive skin, you know, just be a little careful. Well, a good point I heard too is that this way the oils in your hands don't interfere. This is a yes. chemical reaction, you know. And the heat and everything plays into it. So now the biggest thing is um, what I like to do a lot is there's an adhesive quality to this clay, and because of that, you can put so many fun things into your molds and then again you know I would be taking more care with this but you're just gonna push it in you know and then a lot of times what I do just to finish it off is I take a piece of paper um, so that I can do a transfer on it which I'll explain in a little bit but and that's you know if the mold was filled it would be a nice flat finish which I've done here so oh, wait um, so what we're looking at right now just so that I'm clear is this is actually a piece of paper it's just it's already been, been trimmed, trimmed or ripped right. down to the size of the to item in inside yeah. the mold and so I've already molded this one it's already cured it's how long does it take to cure usually about 24 hours but really three to four days for it to really get its hard final finish so would you leave it in the mold for three to four days you no. Uh, you can no. take it out the next morning you could probably even take it out in three or four hours so um, but I usually give it overnight so again here's a mold that we did now there's a lot of things here that we can do you know it's a little messy um, at this point you're you can just kind of clean it up this is where you do up your are cleanup. you using wire snips are they clay snips is they're it a wire they're just flux okay. cutters um, and again you could use uh, metal scissors things like that you can actually even but that's very file. hard which is why you're using yes. like a metal snip right. because you're essentially now now cutting, cutting away anything in the yes. mold that was just a little bit extra. Right. So just so, because I'm curious about this, in order to get the paper down to the shape there, did you have to do anything special? I just cut it with scissors so okay. and just shaped it out. But what I'm gonna show you real quick is this process of removing and we're just gonna remove this paper and so leave it behind. you're just taking it. water or is it something special? It's just water. So I'm just gonna slowly get this nice and wet. I could even dip it in here. Um, but the whole point is I'm gonna remove that top layer of the paper so that I essentially end up having a transfer on the ah. back. And it's just a nice way of finishing it. Um, in addition, I also will take the different types of pigments that I have, and now I can kind of go in and really play. I always think, especially if you're making jewelry or an mm -hmm. object that is meant to be seen from more than one side, so and you're not you just gonna glue it, it to something, yeah. that's a lovely idea for finishing. And I also really like, you know, the idea of just mixing all these things back in. in together. So now I know you have some other little pieces here that you also have finished up. Will you tell yeah. us about those? Sure. So like these ones here, um, this was a guy, and again, um, he was just a mold, but I used a lot of these pigments, but on this one, I used some of these metal pigments to make it a little more patina and metal looking. Um, this one is just part one of this mold, and I can now make it um, 
uh, so cameo. do you always directly add things to it here? Can you, do you put it in the mold? I know you I have this, uh, and I know also you have this other piece here, which I've heard even yes. if you change your mind, sort of after it's been molded, you can still do things. You can still do things. And I'm actually gonna take some of this clay from here real fast just to show you. So on this one, all we need to do is I am gonna fill this again. I'll probably put a little colorant on here. Always add finishing touches, things that make it personal, make each piece unique. Your, Even if you're using a mold over and over, by doing, doing something, something like different. that, you make it new each time. time. So here was a transfer that I already did on a piece of clay, and I'm just gonna push that in. And in this case, I am gonna take this one out right away because I think you can kind of see what it does. Get the gist of it right away. Yeah. Ooh, so, so you now, molded a figure on there. I did, and it's like a little amulet. Do you have to put adhesive between it, or? No, because the clay is actually an adhesive. Oh, wow. So, as long as you're doing it early in the stages. Now, if it was two pieces like this one, mm -hmm. um, like her, and she's done, I would then, I could take um, fresh clay and mix it, and then put it adhere it together. That's so neat. So it actually becomes really seamless in that way. And in, in fact, way. I know speaking of adhesive, you were actually saying that you had adhered some of these metal pieces with the clay. And the nice thing is it's really nice and lightweight too. So in this case, I used it to actually put in a window, but I can just take this, make a little snake. So a snake just meaning a long, long skinny thing. Skin. I've made those, you know, when I was a kid playing with clay and all that yeah. kind of stuff. That's easy to do. That is so easy to do. And then you can just kind of take the two pieces together and go like this. And make a sandwich. And make a sandwich. And now, how long would that take to dry or to cure? Again, same thing. It would be dry to touch in three or four hours. But at the same point tomorrow, it would probably be nice and dry. But I'd still give it three or four days cool. before I wore it. Lots of great clay techniques for adding all sorts of cool personalization. Thank you. I always say try it. If you think of it, try it.